Uh, my name's Mark Maziotti, and I'm um, a natural builder. Been going at this for, God, I don't know, 20 years or something now. Um, started at like a natural building colloquium in New Mexico, and then studied at Emerald Earth with Michael Smith and and a whole bunch of other people and just started my way on until I got enough skill to build my own house and along the way I built a bunch of rocket stoves um, and that's what that's what we're talking about today rocket stove is um, a uh, variation of a thermal mass heater um, really efficient wood burning stove basically um, and it um, also subcategory of contraflow stoves where you you force the hot air and gases to change direction um, hot air wants to rise like in a fireplace you just heat up air and it goes up straight up out the chimney and starts to heat the sky basically and you get a little bit of radiant heat off it but if you change the direction you can keep it around for longer and and direct it into some thermal mass and charge the thermal mass with heat and then it can give you heat uh, over time, um, overnight basically, even after the fire goes out. So in a rocket stove um, you, have a, you have a feed tube and you light a fire right at the bottom of the feed tube and it's kind of counterintuitive because you would think a fire usually burns up, upwards, so if you light a fire at the bottom of this box why wouldn't you get smoke and fire in your house? Well, because there's air going horizontally and then up inside a chimney. And that's the engine of the rocket stove. Inside this barrel is a chimney, the height of the barrel, a little bit shorter than the top. And hot air starts moving up that chimney and creates draw, pulls air into the combustion point, and then along a horizontal tunnel and up this chimney, then it hits the top of this barrel, goes down around this barrel, radiates heat off the barrel, so you get immediate radiant heat, and then it sends it down and out some ductwork that's inside of thermal mass, in this case inside a, a bench on the other side of this wall, and it's inside this wall as soon as it comes out. So this wall is made of cob, earthen, earthen uh, building material, cob is basically just clay and sand and straw and uh, very heavy and dense thermal mass so the heat the cob absorbs the heat from the stove before it leaves the house which is way down at the other end you can kind of see on through there the chimney mm -hmm. and uh, then by the time it leaves you've kind of grabbed all the heat out of the what's being what's being uh, offered by the combustion of the wood and the, the heat potential in the wood, um, the sequestered sunlight in the wood basically is being released and captured so you can use it late, now and later. Very inexpensive, um, very in easy to build. Uh, this is a good, um, a good stove technology for a person who lives in a small cabin or a small space and who's or wants to heat a small space and then there's two other criterion that are very important if you want to have a rocket stove you're going to want to be a kind of person who likes to play with fire pyromaniac <laughs> so to speak and also someone who's home a lot Rocket stove is not good for someone who just um, sort of goes to work for most of the day and then comes home in the evening. So if you're around a lot and you like to play with fire and you got a small space to heat, this is a good uh, good solution for you. Because they have to be tended. Yeah, because they have bed. to be um, the sticks and the have to be tended and and um, periodically every basically 30 minutes. Um, well, not necessarily every 30 minutes, but you could have something to do, jiggle them or feed some more every every 30 minutes to one hour. So um, you want to be around a lot, otherwise mm -hmm. it's just going to go out. And... 
Also, you want it to be fired, you know, for a length of time to charge the thermal mass. So, you know, right. two or three hours minimum to get really the advantage, the maximum advantage out mm -hmm. of it. This stove in particular, we're at um, Dancing Rabbit Eco Village in a residential unit called Sky House. And this stove was put in here originally. And um, we've just completely re rebuilt it, demoed it and rebuilt it. So um, this is the new version. Uh, the old version, the original version was built in the same place but it was built inside this wall, basically, and this wall was built around it so that the thermal mass actually came down on top of it and almost completely, or maybe it did completely cover, you can look at the photos, but um, mm -hmm. completely surrounded the barrel. So their original concept was, I can only assume, let's get the most thermal mass capacity out of this stove we can, the most lasting heat. But they didn't get any immediate satisfaction off of it, which is kind of a bummer. When it's cold, you want to kind of get some heat right away. So you need to expose more of the barrel for that. One difficulty was they had built the stove and then built the wall on top of it. A uh, rocket stove isn't meant to last forever. You know, you get 10 years out of it if you really build it well. And then you kind of have to sort of take the barrel off and check it out and maybe make, make some repairs. Um, but it was almost impossible to do that with this wall on top of the stove, right? There's mm -hmm. no way to remove the barrel. So I had to cut away at least this much to get even get the barrel off and a new barrel on. And it turns out that this sort of architectural feature wor worked out well anyway to um, have sort of a path see-through to the other room. And, and then we wanted more radiant heat and we, we wanted the wall off the barrel. So this worked out anyway. So we were able to get it off, but I wouldn't advise building a wall on top of your rock stove. <laughs> you can put it in a wall like this if you have, you know, if you have access. Um, yeah, because then it heats up both spaces. I guess if you have a wall, it'll it'll yeah, heat up, heat up both and, sides yeah. of the wall and the wall if your wall is made out of thermal mass. Mm -hmm. So it had to be torn out and rebuilt, and we decided to rebuild it and expose a lot more of the barrel to get immediate heat. And there's still plenty of thermal mass being charged from this stove. Like I said, it goes all the way through a bench on the other side. Probably a ton or more of cob and thermal mass that's being heated by the stove. So you're getting both, both uh, best of both now, some radiant heat. Also, because they originally built it with a welded up kind of feed tube, horizontal tube and, and chimney in there out of metal, the steel, this is part of it. The old stove would just cut off the feed tube, which is a nice hinged door here, which was salvageable. But the rest of it was not salvageable. It was completely melted. Um, there's also a photo of that, but it was melted and corroded and, and destroyed. So the whole stove had caved in basically and was not functional anymore. So, so that's one thing, building, building out of a welded up metal maybe not ideal because it it melted i mean we're talking about 1600 possibly 2000 degrees in at the combustion point down there in the burn tunnel mm. so that's really hot and um and th and this thick steel this is you know quarter inch or thicker and um and it it was melted so also so fire brick we we re rebuilt it with fire brick which is what most people use to build sort of the at least the engine part of the rocket stove and then right. you can build the chimney out of fire brick or you can build in, in this case we built we used a ceramic piece of ceramic water pipe okay. for the chimney um third thing is they use six inch uh stove pipe for the chimney and through the for the whole exhaust system which means a rock stove the basic rule is to proportion all the all the uh, engine and, and the and the exhaust to the same cross-sectional diameter, which in this case would be six inches since your exhaust is six inches. The original stove was designed for to eight inch dimensions, mm -hmm. which was curious because one of the cardinal rules is you don't want something to get smaller along the way because if it gets smaller, it chokes down 
the exhaust and the gases and then can slow, slow your efficiency down even to the point of reversing the flow of the stove so you'll get smoke coming in the house which is which is you know, not not fun <laughs> right but i did reduce in the in the remodel um version i did reduce um the dimensions of the of the engine okay. down to somewhere in between six and eight so around seven scaled now to around seven inches here and then it goes down to six there so so and it really this thing just takes off running anytime you light a fire and so it's like i don't think it's ever going to be in danger of backing up probably because of that huge chimney uh and then you want to insulate insulate around the chimney a little bit we use perlite for that we use the old perlite that we took out this is one cool thing about natural building and building with earth is as opposed to sort of concrete for example in the middle of winter, I rebuilt this stove in a week. And, you know, mixing cob, you usually use your feet and your hands and water and stuff, so not ideal time to be mixing cob. But we demoed it, and I was able to salvage all the old cob and plaster enough to rebuild this stove. In basically stayed all indoors. I remixed, you know, just repurposed the materials mm -hmm. to rebuild the stove. So that's pretty cool. And then it's just some fire brick, some old brick, red brick, um, just for decorative. Uh, you know, you can build one of these for zero dollars if you're, if you're industrious. Like I said, it works really well. They haven't, it hasn't been cold enough in the last couple of weeks to really fire it all day. So mm -hmm. we don't really know how it's going to, this is, this is a big space for a rock stove. A rock stove, you know, is not meant to heat a big space. It's meant to heat a smaller space. Although they can heat. I have one in my house that I lived with for 10 years and it's heating 840 square feet. You could heat a thousand square feet, you know, that's, that'd probably be max. This is bigger. Yeah. So they're not counting on this for their sole heat for this. this They've space. got like They've radiant had floor. In floor radiant yeah. heating and um, passive solar. And then this is sort of the third, third line of defense against the cold. This is a feature that you won't find on most rocket stoves. This is Mark Maziotti proprietary patented <laughs> technology. Um, this, this is an ash clean out um, door, basically. I, for the life of me, I don't know why they don't... I guess it makes building it a little more complicated. That's the only reason why you wouldn't do this, um, you know, for any rocket stove. But, so rocket stoves are super efficient. They they burn, they combust the wood more completely and more efficiently efficiently than than uh, wood burning stoves or fireplaces. Um, so they and they create a lot less ash. But eventually you do have to clean out the ash um, if you're burning it consistently in the winter, maybe every couple of weeks or something. Uh, and and the way you, you would normally do that on a rocket stove is is problematic because. It's a down feed tube. The only access is here. So you have to 
get your arm in here, reach all the way down along the burn tunnel with some kind of rake or scraper and bring the ash over here and then figure out a way to get it up and out of there or use a shop vac or uh, it's just always been an, an awkward problem. So I solved it um, by creating an ash clean out door which is just a back wall to this feed tube basically that lifts up and out. Mm -hmm. Right so any kind of um, and, and there's just a couple of channels in the brick to hold that thing in. So it just slides up and out and then now you have access horizontally here for just a regular ash you know shovel or mm -hmm. some kind of long handled shovel that you just slide on in there and bring it's your ashes out. straight mm -hmm. out and then put your door back in and off you go. By the way this is patented technology so if you use it you have to find a way to send me some money. <laughs> How much? <laughs> How much do you think it's worth? <laughs> Whatever you can afford, between one dollar and a million. <laughs> okay, a million sounds good. A million sounds a little too high. <laughs> I've been really impressed with the quality of Mark's work and his wealth of knowledge of natural building. If you're interested in hiring Mark for a natural building project or workshop, contact him at the address on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to Hardcore Sustainable and share and like the video. Follow the Hardcore Sustainable Facebook page for more frequent updates and posts. Also, check out any of my over 150 inspiring sustainable living videos by going to my channel page.